Alright, so I guess we're on here. Um, I'm going to do a little quick review of this uh, Romeo y Julieta smoke here. It's um, La Casa release. And uh, it's called the Cedros Deluxe. And they come with this little sheath of cedar, Spanish cedar on there. And uh, this one is from... Uh, 2015 so it's vintage smoke right now of course <laughs> wrapper smells very cedary sweet cedar very nice you know very nice these are very sweet cigars and uh, I have noticed that they have gotten a lot better with age I had two boxes of 10 now I probably got, I got one box of 10 they're aging long term and from maybe I got five of the other ones left over in my um, humidors yeah the smell is badass excellent um, Yeah, it's, it's, it's putting off a sweetness that I would say is uh, pretty awesome, pretty... The wrapper is uh, slightly oily, quite firm, quite packed cigar here. And uh, five years old. So these uh, cedars, I do recycle them. I'll either uh, light my cigars with them or keep them in my humidors. Yeah. Mm. I do like the draw. It's a very um, firm draw, draw. So I don't like, you know, be hot boxing too much. You know, if the draw is too loose on a type of a ring gauge like this, uh, too much, you know, packing too much of a punch. So, it's good to have them a little firm. Mm. Wild cherry. I mean, a slight sweetness, so it's almost, it's a wild cherry that's fading into a sweet cherry. Mm-mm-mm. -hmm. A little salt. Mm. Yeah, there's like a wood oil that's leaking off from the wrapper, from the cedar wrap. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good. Light this thing up, I'll uh, review, talk about it a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, mention about this uh, story, something crazy that happened to me um, just recently, actually, that I can't even, I still just can't believe it actually happened here in Japan. Mm. Very sweet, uh, grassy, green, yeah, cedary is coming through. Smooth to the nose, some gram, some like some honey gram, um, bread. A certain type of sweetness that's coming through on the smoke here. It's very pleasant. It's very, very nice. Mm.
yeah, cigar uh, type of cigar, you're going to go, go slow. And just uh, something like this, with the way it's drawn, will probably last me an hour and a half. So... I'll be smoking a cigar for the next half of my my, my night, you know. Smooth, delicious. Loving it. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about this story that happened to me. It's crazy ass shit that happened to me. Uh, I got drunk as shit. And this is the last time you know, I made like a, a resolution. I'm never gonna do this again because it was dangerous what happened. But I got fucked up in fucking Yokaichi, Japan. I was walking out at like 4 in the morning, lost, walking all by myself through the city, fucking pissed off, don't know where the hell I am, trying to find my hotel, I mean, whoo <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Well, it was December, it was uh, last year, 2019, December... 25th or 26th or some shit. 20, I don't know, maybe 26th. It was, it was a Boninkai. It was a company, Boninkai. A company that I'm working with. Not one of their employees, but I'm working with this company. They have these like end of the year parties called Boninkais. And, uh, they, of course, they always invite me to join it. And, and they, they pay, the, they foot the bill. And it's all you can drink, it's all you can eat. Nice hotel room, you know. So, you know, we got we rent the big um, uh, kaikon in the in the hotel room, like a business room or a hall or something. We rent company rents it out, and they have all this catering. It's quite nice, you know. So, all yeah, of course I'm gonna go chat with all the coworkers, people I work with, and stuff over the company. Get a little drunk. It's fun, but. Uh, so I always go every year for the last six years. I I always join the the Boninkai. This year, this guy invited me, a friend of mine over there at the company, this older guy. He he invited me to a um, second party, like an after party, and it was at a, uh, a like a what's called a snack bar, and a snack bar is like a kind of like an escort club, and they have all these different ones around here. They have like. Chinese escorts, they have young girls, young Japanese girls, they have older Japanese women, there's Filipinas, that's pretty much, yeah, I guess, you know, what they got. There's all different types and, and different, you know, money classes. So we went, so this guy invited me to, um, to go with him to a Filipina uh, snack. after the Boninkai. So um, I was like, sure, that sounds great. You know, so I rented a hotel room. And then these other people invited me to a Zero G guy. So Zero G guy is like a before the party, like a beginning, like before starting the party, party. And uh, like a pre-party or whatever. And so I, I was like, sounds great. So I met those people at like four o'clock, 4.30. Took the train down to my hotel, checked in. Then I met them down at the station, train station, downtown Yokaichi. We we're going to start the, the, the pre-party. So we went to this little restaurant. We started drinking beer. Kampai, hey, all the drinking. And see, the Japanese style of drinking parties is the older Japanese men are going to pay for everything. But they're going to get you drunk as shit like that's just their old custom 
you know, and they just gonna keep buying more and more. No, you gotta drink more. Come on, come on, drink more and more. Oh, you know, oh soy, you're drinking too slow. They're gonna say, oh soy, uh, you know, and you're gonna be like, fuck, you know, okay, no problem. And see, I'm a, I'm a strong drinker. I can I can handle my shit, you know. So I'm like, fuck, no problem, man. I keep them coming. And so I'm just just people buying. I'm drinking beer. I'm drinking some other drinks at the fucking zero in the pre party. It's like five o'clock. I'm already getting a little bit drunk. And so then I go to the, the goddamn main event. All the, you know, the president is there, all the high level people. It's more formal. Everyone's wearing like business attire, suits and ties. I wasn't even wearing shit, man. I got I got the wrong information. I just you know, wore some, something like this, you know, something way too casual. And I'm already drunk, I'm in there fucking around, having a good time. It was alright, you know, those people are cool. And so then, like, we, we, uh, I hooked up with more people. They wanted to party with me because I was, like, really, you know, feeling good. And so then we, the main guy invited me to the zero, the second party. It was like, all right, man, as this bonin guy's over, let's go to the second party. And some other people were following me, you know, so because I was, you know, pretty, going pretty high tension, you know, acting pretty crazy. So they're like, let's see what this American motherfuckers all about. So we we went to this place, and I'm probably drunk as shit at this point. It was a Philippine snack. Went in there, and they you know they got to set up these couches and lounges and stuff, and everybody's sitting around talking. And this uh, this young hot Filipina girl, she's probably about 22 or something. She sits down, plops down right next to me. She says, oh, thank God, finally somebody I can, you know, talk to. Because, you know, not many Japanese people can really speak English very well, so probably this Filipina girl couldn't have a communication. So she saw me, and she's like, here's somebody I could talk to in English, you know. I don't understand what I'm saying. So I was like, oh, okay. So we were chatting, talking. Now, in my memory, I was, like, fucked up enough, and I was like, no more alcohol. Fuck you. No more. Nope. 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 And they're trying to give me some uh, Imojochu, which is like some kind of a crazy 20% rice wine. Very... Tastes like water. Easy to get drunk. I was like, no, no, no. Danger, danger. I don't want to drink that. No. I was refusing it in my mind. In my memory. And uh, so there's two sides of the story. This is when the story splits. My memory and what really happened. Which is totally different from my memory. So in my memory, I was refusing drinks, trying to sober up, get ready to go back to the hotel and just chill out because I wanted to wake up early, have a breakfast in the hotel, free breakfast, take the train back home, chill out. That's what my plan was, but I was just like, I was refusing the drinks. Time, it's getting you know eleven thirty, time to go home, and then. That was basically, then we left there, and uh, we met up with these other people from the from our company, from the company I'm working with, and they're like, hey, 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 and they're drunk as hell, and they're walking the streets in downtown, and this one old dude, he's like, oh, Ryan, come on, let's go, so I was like, let's fucking go, and we walked like a country mile down the road to like the main, like out of the downtown area, way out of town, to his friend's little sushi bar. And then, and then we went in there, there was two other dudes in there that we knew we were like, hey, hey, and they're just drinking these big bottles, these huge like two liter bottles of shochu, you know, and uh, eating sashimi dishes and stuff. And then, you know, it's like, it's like midnight and I'm like, Oh fuck! And I sit down there, and uh, I was like getting tired. And I'm in my mind, in my memories, my memory, I was getting tired. And then they put one of the big bottles of the fucking shochu in front of my face, and I was just like, no fucking way. And then uh, the young dude sitting across from me, he picked up the bottle. And he's like pulling on the cap. He didn't know how to open the bottle. He's too young or something. He never opened one of those bottles before. I was like, give me that motherfucking thing. And there's like a little strip and I turned it and then I popped the cork off. Boop. 
I said, that's how you open that, man. Fucking pour me a glass. And then we just started drinking that shit. And, and, I'm, and I'm drinking it like, I can't even, it's like water. 20 fucking percent. And I'm just like pounding it down. Like, that shit is nothing. And then it hit me, boom. I can't stand up. Fuck, I can't fucking stand up. Can't stand up. I'm stuck here. Can't stand up. My shoes are over there. You know, you take your shoes off before you enter the Japanese hotel. I mean, restaurant. And I'm like, I can't even stand up to walk over to put my shoes on to get out of this place and get to my fucking hotel. I realize that and I'm like, fuck, it's over for me. And then boom, I'm blacked out. And the next thing I remember is I'm walking down the streets of like downtown, the side of the downtown area, pitch black streets, nobody there. It's probably like four in the morning, looking for my hotel, lost, falling down. I had, I was, it was all in my business, kind of like my nice pants, you know, and all these fucking seeds were all, these, Weird seeds were stuck to the, the cloth of my pants. Like I was rolling around some some yard or something or some weeds. I mean, where, what the fuck, you know? I'm all cut up. I'm like, oh, I can barely walk. I'm like, where the fuck am I? I was getting so pissed. Like, fuck is goddamn my hotel at, motherfucker. And I just, like, lost my mind, you know? I, I, I didn't even, I didn't know where my, I was like, I had my cell phone, but I couldn't figure out how to even use the fucking thing. I was like, fuck this shit. Knew I was fucked up. I went into a, a convenience store, a little store. It's open 24 hours. And I wanted to ask the guy in Japanese, like, you know, Mitsui Garden Hotel, why do you this guy? And I was like, where's my fucking hotel? You know, is it this way? You know, don't you don't And but what came out of my mouth was like, not English, not Japanese. It was like, <laughs> and then the guy was looking at me like, please fucking leave. And I was like, oh, yeah. and I just walked out of there and I finally got back to my fucking hotel, found it. I checked in, plopped down on the bed. I had to check out. I got there at like seven in the morning, seven in the morning. I checked back into my hotel. I had to check out like, like 10. I was just so exhausted, I laid out and you know, just passed out on the bed in one second. Like, as soon as my head touched the pillow, boom, I'm out. And I wake up, the alarm's like, whap, 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 right in my ear. And I'm like, fuck, man. I gotta fucking go. And I, it was like 10 minutes to get the fuck out of there. I got up, I mean, I was fucked up. My whole body was hurting like hell. I looked at the bed, it was all red with my blood. I was like, or somebody's blood, I didn't even know it was blood on my shoe. I was like, I hope that's my fucking blood. Because I was like, about four or five hours were just